Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today I've got AirDog's newest drone, the 82. Um, now it's spelled 80 and then two I's, but it looks like two ones, but you get the point. The whole thing about this drone though, is that it's a sports focused drone. So while I have like the DJI Mavic and the Phantom and all their drones are awesome and I've got them in my bag right there as well, um, this is really about following you for solo sports. So if your interest here is purely to go off and take pretty pictures of things like this, this drone probably isn't the best bet. Though we can certainly do that now, and that's some of the features that we'll talk about that are new to this drone. But on the flip side, if you want to do drone cinematography of yourself doing a sport that you like, whether it's mountain biking or road cycling or um, windsurfing or kite surfing, whatever it may be, somewhere that it's more complex uh, to basically capture yourself the entire time, then there's no better drone than the AirDog. Um, I've done a lot of videos showing how the Mavic and the Phantom, and even the Spark work in these active tracking or follow me type scenarios. And at the end of the day, they all kind of suck. And the reason they suck is that if you look at a lot of those other drones, they're following you as an object using the camera. So they look at you and say, this is an object, um, or they're following the remote, but then you have to hold the remote. So you have to either put it in your handlebars or if you're out windsurfing, what do you do with it? And that's how the AirDog differentiates itself. Instead of following an object or following a controller on your handlebars, it's actually following this little transmitter pod right here. This pod is totally waterproof, so you can go jump in the water if you want with it, and it's gonna follow this. And both the unit and this have a GPS as well as an altimeter in it, um, and it's gonna go ahead and basically follow all your train up and down. So as I go down this mountain here, it'll actually follow me going down, which is pretty darn cool. And that's one of the things that differentiates itself again from the DJI products is that when it goes downhill, those those will actually stay level. They will not follow you downhill. Um, there is a train follow mode, but it's not the same thing as a tracking mode. A lot of people get confused about that. And certainly if you have another pilot that can go ahead and control the drone, then it can go downhill. Um, but if you're trying to do this yourself, it doesn't just simply doesn't work. Um, so what I want to do is talk about what's new in this drone because there are a bunch of things that are new. It may look like the same drone from the outside, um, except it's purple as opposed to uh, yellow, but inside it's totally different and the gimbal is totally different. Um, and that's what matters quite a bit in fact. Um, so first off on the outside, as you see here, it's all pretty much the same. The batteries are slightly newer, um, but the gimbal is what's unique here. So now it supports the GoPro Hero 5 black um, that you see there on front. So I put that in there. The gimbal kind of uh, the way you snap your camera in there is almost identical to the way it works on the Karma drone in terms of that clip system there. Um, you cannot take this gimbal out though. Unlike the Karma drone, you can't take it out. Um, I'm just going to say I don't recommend the Karma drone in any way, shape, or form. It's bad at almost everything it does. Uh, so that's kind of where we could end that conversation. Um, but this gimbal here is also a lot better than the original AirDog gimbal. And if you saw some of my past AirDog videos, you've seen that little bit of jitter sometimes or just not quite as smooth. This gimbal aims to resolve that and you can see from the footage it is effing awesome. It's way, way, way better than it used to be. Um, it's on par now with what we see from DJI, um, which kind of is generally regarded as having the best gimbals out there. Um, and the reason why gimbals matter is if you have shaky footage or even footage that just feels unnatural, it doesn't feel silky smooth, then you're gonna get bored of the video really quick and you'll start to focus more on the fact that the video isn't clean than the subject that you're tracking. So you want to never think about how clean that gimbal is. It should just look beautiful. Um, so that's the gimbal piece of it. Uh, it still folds up like in the past. So all this kind of stuff folds up like this. Um, press the button there. You do have to take the props off, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, you can kind of go like this, but then it doesn't really fit in a bag very well. Um, speaking of which, you see a bag that are holding up my bike. Uh, that bag is actually what I pack this in and I can pack a lot of crap in that bag. Um, so I have this drone, the Mavic, my DSLR, the tripod that thing is sitting on, three action cameras, uh, four batteries, and a bunch of other completely and totally random crap. So anyways, that bag has a lot of crap in it. Um, and I used to use the GoPro Seeker bag and I still do quite a bit. This bag is from the Kasaki, the Saki, the, it doesn't really matter. It's a complete and total rip off bag of the GoPro Seeker bag down to like every last little thing. But there's ours actually some things in there that they've done better, um, which is kind of funny, but that's a whole separate topic. Uh, it's half the price of the GoPro bag. So it's a great item. I bought it myself last week. Um, they, they have no idea who I am. So I'm not like, it's not an ad or anything. But anyways, if you want a much cheaper bag that fits the AirDog, boom, there you go. So back to the AirDog itself, interior wise, they've completely gutted all the electronics. Uh, so it's built completely new, new from the ground up. Everything from the magnometer, um, compass, uh, GPS, all that stuff is totally new inside of this, um, meant to keep it more stable, meant to uh, make it better in the wind and stuff like that. Um, this unit is pretty darn stable in the wind, mostly because it's so damn big um, in the wind. Uh, it is a beast. I mean, you hear this thing, it's much, much louder than uh, the Spark or the Mavic 
Dynamic or even the Phantom 4 series. Um, it is quieter than the original AirDog, but in the grand scheme of quieter, this is still really the damn loud drone. Um, anyways, let's go to software features. And software is what's new on this, uh, in particular things that are notable here. So one of the complaints in the past was that, you know, if, if compared to a lot of other drones where you can get those like establishing shots, the B-roll shots, the things that sort of pull the entire video together, like the opening sequence of pulling out and stuff like that, you couldn't do it with the AirDog. It was just tracking you. And while if you got really creative with it, you could create and establish some of those shots, but it was a lot of work and a lot of complexity. It took a lot of tries. Um, I did a video last winter uh, two winters ago, skiing completely shot autonomously on this. And you may think that some of those shots were like done with other drones, but it took like five days to make a three minute video um, with a lot of complexity involved and a lot of planning to get those shots that I wanted to. This makes it a lot easier. So now you use this little star button right there and you go into these special modes. And so these modes include revealing in, revealing out, um, a 360 degree mode, uh, the ability to look down on something, to look away on something. The idea here being that you can make some of these establishing shots to sort of glue your entire piece together. Uh, and they are pretty cool. I think I would like to see more shots down the road. Uh, and I think they've got ideas around that as well. Uh, but it's a good start. Do keep in mind though, you can't preview the GoPro from your remote. Uh, you can go ahead and preview this via Wi-Fi connection to your phone. Uh, AirDog says they're all right with that. They say there's no real issues. They say it might degrade the signal slightly in terms of the range of signal of the AirDog, but there's no conflicts or no concerns around flyaways, which used to be a drone thing in the past, where if you had a GoPro streaming uh, via Wi-Fi and the drone, then bad things happen, but they say there shouldn't be an issue there. The real big ticker though on the new AirDog is this 3D line functionality. The idea here that being that you can go ahead and create an align, um, and that a really complex line that you want the drone to follow while you stay somewhere else. In the past, they had a simple 2D line function, meaning that you could establish points and the drone would stay stuck on that line, um, like white and rice. It would stay perfectly on that line while you did whatever you did and would keep the camera pointed at you. Now you may be saying, how's that different than what DJI does? Well, in their case, the camera's not gonna point at you. The camera is going to follow along on their pre-programmed routes and their lines, um, which is great, but it can't follow you, which is what this whole thing is about, is following you from an action standpoint. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. With the 3D routes, though, it's more than just a line, it's the elevation as well as the orientation of the drone. Uh, so I can do cool things like, even if I was on perfectly pancake flat terrain, I could start off in front of me, and then I can sweep up really high, go to the side, pull around behind me, lots of neat stuff there with enough creativity. Um, now, I've been kind of playing with it out here, and it's cool out here, but it's much cooler in honestly a more controlled environment. Um, I've almost got too many options out here. Whereas the 3D line functionality is great. If you've got like a mountain bike run that you know and you use all the time and you wanna do really incredible shots where you wanna fly in between trees uh, because the precision is there to do this, you can do that. Now you can create these 3D lines in two different ways. One is to use the air leash and actually create the points manually. So I could you know, go over there and pop a point in there and the next here and so on, um, just creating these points uh, basically like putting markers on the ground. The second is with the phone app, uh, and I can do the exact same thing just by tapping little points along the way. There are pros and cons to each, uh, with you know the controller and putting places here and there. Um, I can't put a point down there because it's a cliff right there. Um, whereas with the phone app, I can do that. On the inverse, um, when I use this, it's gonna have super accurate altitude data for that point there. Whereas the phone app, it's gonna use the Google uh, Maps API and pull the altitude data there. So it may not be quite as good, uh, but it's something to you know certainly fill those gaps in. Now that I've talked about some of the new features. Uh, I'm gonna kind of give you some of my raw footage right here. I'll also link down below there to the raw file so you can see the whole thing from start to finish if you want to as well. Um, I'm using obviously the GoPro Hero 5 Black. I'm shooting at 2.7K linear mode and image stabilization on at 60 frames per second. Um, they recommend an image stabilization on as well to help a little bit more with the gimbal, uh, just to give that last little bit there, uh, which is great, which is fine. GoPro honestly says the same thing as well for their drone. Um, I use 2.7K as opposed to 4K because in 2.7K I can get linear view, which removes the fisheye effect. It also gives me 60 frames per second, which means I can slow things down, uh, do more there. And then I can also crop in if I wanted to just do a 1080p edit as well. So that's sort of my go-to for most drone stuff right now, uh, just because it allows a lot of flexibility there. So I'll let you enjoy that for a second and we'll come back and wrap up.
So where do I stand on it? So far, it's pretty cool. This is definitely a first look type scenario, uh, post and video. There's a post down below, by the way. Um, it's not a in-depth review. I'll expect that uh, sometime probably in the fall, like September-ish or so, depending on when they start shipping. Their plans right now are to start shipping in August, so right around the corner, uh, and then into the fall, depending on where you get your order in line there. They are on Kickstarter. It started off at $9.99, a thousand bucks. Then it went to 1100 bucks, and I think it's like 1200-ish right now. Maybe it might still be 1100 bucks. Uh, it's just the usual Kickstarter, the early you're in, the cheaper it is, the sooner you get your product type of thing. Um, down the road, they're planning on selling it for 1500 bucks, which is what they sold the original AirDog for. That might be a bit of a tougher sell, but between them and Stalker, another drone that I've kind of talked about and shown in the past, they're really the only two that can do sports action follow me. Uh, each have their pros and cons. I would say AirDog is, is probably a bit more mature um, from a, both from a company standpoint as well as a product standpoint. Uh, but again, there's, there's pros and cons to both, so you want to kind of check all that out. I linked in my site down below to the comparison table so you can see all that goodness. With that, thanks for watching. Do not forget to hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Uh, I really appreciate it. Also, if you hit that little bell ding dong thing down there, you'll get notified the second videos pop up just like this one. Have a good one.